even the physical evidence is overwhelming, never mind the th thousands of reports. But that again has to do with the worldview matter. I, I, yeah, we should get more evidence. We should keep getting evidence, of course, but that's not the main problem. People say, oh, there's no evidence. You know how they, you hear that? Oh, there's no evidence. How many times have people said that to you? There's no evidence. They haven't looked. Or if they look, they don't see it. <laughs> Mark Macy made the point. You remember he said, when he was talking about this extraordinary matter of these communications coming from the uh, astral and ethereal dimensions, he said, for some people, it doesn't matter how good the evidence is, it won't make any difference. Now, this is a little different. Our knowledge is insufficient and the available methods of study are inadequate. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I, I know there is something to this in the sense that I don't think, and I'll talk about this more, I don't think we have yet developed a way of knowing that has to do with something like this. Now, as we are okay about physical evidence, if we, you know, we, we know a good deal about that, but when it comes to something that seems to cut across all our disciplinary boundaries, uh, particularly when we're dealing primarily with human experience, as well, of course, as the physical phenomena, but there's a tremendous amount of this that has to do with reports, human experiences. How we know, our ways of knowing, uh, need to be refined and, and developed further. Can we get the, yeah, can we, yeah. Uh, maybe it's happening, but it's too frightening to think about. Um, now, I run into that all the time. Okay. You know, I can buy it, but I don't want to think of it. That, that's too upsetting. That could be happening, that the sense of loss of control, the helplessness. Um, one of my colleagues was very open to this, a psychiatrist named Bill Waterman, invited me to a, a fancy dinner in which, uh, you know, gourmet cooking went on, a lot of Boston politicians there, and you know how they want to be friendly with everybody, and, you know, well, I guess every place, but particularly in Boston. And, um, and uh, one of them, uh, you know, I got to talking with him, and, um, little bit and he said what do you do and I said well I work with people who've uh, had uh, encounters with the uh, being the extraterrestrial beings <laughs> the, there wasn't even a moment of politeness he turned around said that's too far out and walked away he didn't want to hear anything about it he didn't care about my vote or my constituency or anything uh, else So, you know, I mean, part of sanity, I guess, is knowing who to say what to at what time, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't care in this uh, situation. If it's true, we humans are less in control of our destinies than we like to believe and are thereby demoted in the cosmic hierarchy. I think my prejudice shows through on this one. I, I, uh, yes, <laughs> I think this is a very big one. I, I think that this is a huge, to use, I don't like to use psychiatric terms, but I, I will in this context. It's a huge narcissistic injury to us uh, that, that we are not maybe the smartest, the most powerful, whatever, that beings can come and go and take us, or that they can whiz in and out of our airspace, sometimes not even show up in the radio. I mean, it's just... Uh, insult to what we think we do best, which is technology, right? I mean, it gets us right where we live. <laughs> the phenomenon breaks the game. That is, it threatens virtually every human vested interest. Now, this is fundamentally important. We've heard about the shadow government in the Jonathan Reed case. If you don't believe the Jonathan Reed case, take the one you just heard about Virginia and Brazil and the U.S. government, Brazilian government's collaboration there uh, to intimidate, threaten, not let this information get out. And in the last talk, you heard about, you've been hearing about the, the, the power greed that goes on and the threat that this is to the power structure 
as it is, to the financial institutions, to practically every institution, uh, loses its dominance. If, if, uh, this, it's as if the whole church of science, of government, of the economic system, no longer is the dominant force uh, on the planet. And the, the resistance to this, the, the violent resistance to this, is, you, is we have to really pay attention to it. And not be afraid, but be uh, strategic. We lack a philosophical framework for thinking about something which manifests in our world but seems not to be of it. Now this is a subject that I'm very interested in, uh, and I think many people are. Um, we've, we're pretty good in understanding the physical world, and we're you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, have learned a lot about the psyche. We've, but the Western enterprise over the last several centuries ha has more or less successfully, not, not in reality, but as a disciplinary device, has separated the physical world, the material world, from the unseen world, the, the, the deeper world, the implicate order, to use David Bohm, physicist's term. And this phenomenon doesn't seem to respect that boundary. It seems to somehow cross over. Uh, it's some kind of third realm. It's not entirely in the physical world. It's not entirely in the non-physical world. It's in both at the same time. It's sort of paradoxical. We don't, we're not very sophisticated about thinking in, in those paradoxical terms. And I'll, I'll be coming back to that uh, uh, again. All right, what further do we need to know? Now here, um, I'm not, when I go through this, I'm not saying everyone has to know all of this. I mean, surely I don't know all the things that I'm going to lay out. I just think these, this is what's relevant to knowledge in, in, this, uh, in this field. How do we better investigate the physical reality of UFOs, abductions, and related phenomena? Well, you've seen, heard some really good work on this. Uh, there's a, a lot more that could be done. There's a need for people from dis different disciplines, physics, psychology, anthropology, history of science, getting together to see if they can understand this more comprehensively so it isn't seen as just operating in, in a single uh, discipline. Now, what do we consider to be physical evidence? And what are our standards of evidence? Now, I've been, I was, this is the one they really tried to, you know, really hit me on very hard at, at Harvard. And uh, uh, I mean, there's a great deal of evidence around, say, physical cuts, marks. Uh, uh, Angela Thompson Smith talked about the uh, circle of, of little lesions that appear. But I can't, as a physician, present that uh, to a medical audience because if there's a dermatologist in the crowd, uh, they're going to, you can imagine the questions they're going to ask, the self-infliction and mosquito bites and whatever. It's not true. They're wrong. But it, it won't pass uh, as evidence. So a lot of what will pass for us won't there. And I don't know what to do about that except to be as scrupulous and overwhelming. And uh, what was the term that... Uh, uh, Michael Horn used, uh, it was uh, that we have to reach an almost higher level. It's a Caesar's wife kind of thing. It has to reach a, a level where there's just no denying the, the power uh, of the evidence. We can't do controlled experiments. The whole phenomenon won't stay still for us to, you know, take an alien and sit down and five aliens in a row and see how they behave. And, you know, uh, we, we have to do a kind of naturalistic uh, scientific, uh, take the information as it comes. But there are traditions of, of that, and certainly um, uh, uh, astrophysicists know they, they can't set up experiments out there in the cosmos that are going to make the, you know, the comets go where they want them to go and see how they work. You know, they have to take, study it in its, in its natural forms. Another thing, uh, oh, on that last one, another thing that I thought about a lot, and I, I don't know what this will mean to you all, but it, the, you're familiar with the concept of the trickster? 
the trickster archetype. Um, well, the trickster seems to be having a field day in, in, in this field. I mean, uh, just when you have something that looks like really solid physical evidence, pretty soon there's a fight starting between them. You've got a whole one group saying it's a hoax, another group saying it's, uh, it's for sure, it's real. And, and it's as if there's somebody being amused at our you know, uh, hubris in 